In this video, I wanted to provide a final example of how IV estimators can be used. And the example which we're going to be concerned with here is how do institutions affect a country's level of economic development? So the idea here is that we have on our sort of left hand side, we're trying to explain variations in GDP or sort of log of GDP. And the idea on the right hand side is we have some measure of institutions. In this case, I've sort of chosen property rights. So there are many theories which say that as a country's level of property rights are sort of improved, that results in a increased investment in both physical and human capital, which leads to increased sort of economic development. So that's the sort of causal relationship which we're interested in. But the problem is there is likely also a reverse causal effect actually occurring which is that as countries get richer, they can afford to build better institutions, which in turn leads to better property rights. So there's also this sort of reverse causal effect which is happening. Furthermore, there are likely a whole host of omitted factors which are also correlated with property rights. So that further compounds our sort of estimation by OLS strategy here. So ideally, we would be looking for some sort of IV to estimate the effect which property rights have on GDP. And just say so you don't just think this is some sort of obscure example that isn't really of that much interest, then all you need to do is you need to think about the situations of East and West Germany, sort of back in the Soviet days. So obviously, these regions were very, very geographically similar. Um, the main difference being the type of institutions which are installed in each of these separate countries. And that led to very significant differences in sort of economic output and sort of other measures of development in these two countries. So that's one example. Another sort of current example is the situation of North and South Korea. So again, these two countries are very geographically similar, but the sort of difference between these two countries is the sort of institutions which the government sort of installs. So that's kind of why I'm interested in this particular example here, because there are countries or sets of countries for which institutions have made significant difference on the quality of life and the economic development. And the paper which I'm going to be looking at here is that by Asimoglu, Johnson and Robinson in 2001, who were concerned with this particular relationship up here, namely how property rights affect GDP. And their idea was that the sort of settlement strategy which a sort of colonialist chose to undertake in a given country would in turn lead to differences in the type of early institution which was installed in that country. So the sort of settlement strategies which we might be sort of thinking about are sort of what they call extractive strategies for some regimes. So you can sort of think about the extractive nature of the Belgium occupation of Congo um, in that all they did there is they went and they extracted natural resources and actually enslaved the local people while they were at it. So there weren't many sort of early institutions which were built there. However, if you contrast this with the sort of neo-colonialist um, strategies which were sort of installed in places like, let's say, the US or New Zealand or perhaps even Australia, then the idea here is that in these sort of neo-colonialist countries, the sort of settlers took up the sort of opportunity to sort of build their own versions of the institutions which they had back home. So the early institutions which were built there were very sort of good. And the idea is that these sort of early institutions, whether they were sort of bad or good, fed through to sort of current institutions, so sort of current level of um, sort of property rights, which in turn affected the sort of level of GDP in the sort of country which we observe at the moment. So the idea is that the initial settlement strategy, which was undertaken by colonialists, actually had quite a significant effect on current sort of differences in GDP. So that's a sort of causal relationship they were interested in, but they needed some sort of instrument for this settlement strategy. And ingeniously here, they actually used the sort of settler mortality rates. So the idea here is that differences in the mortality rates, which were primarily due to sort of things like malaria or sort of yellow fever, 
Differences in the settler mortality rates actually affected the type of regime which was actually set up in these settlements. So for areas such as the Congo where sort of malaria and yellow fever were sort of rife, the sort of regime which was set up there was actually very extractive, which wasn't very good for sort of early institutions. Whereas you consider the mortality rates for places like the US and New Zealand, and the mortality rates were much lower here, which meant that the early institutions was, which were set up there were that much better than those in sort of extractive regimes, which in turn has fed through to sort of current differences in GDP which we observe today. So the idea with this sort of um, mortality rate instrument is that it affects property rights, but it doesn't affect any of these other sort of omitted factors. And in fact, I'm sort of oversimplifying the situation. In their research paper, they actually looked into sort of whether it was actually the case that mortality rates were affecting these various omitted factors by sort of including as sort of dummies for each of these factors. And in fact, it didn't actually affect the results which they sort of output in the end very much anyway. So the idea with this instrument is that it affected property rights, but didn't affect any of the omitted factors which might also determine GDP. Furthermore, because we can't sort of think about there being a reverse causal effect here, because you know mortality rates are in no way affected by the GDP of a country, you can sort of think about changes in Z as causing changes in property rights, and in turn causing changes in GDP. So we're not actually, we're considering the relationship of interest here rather than the reverse causal relationship here. And actually what the researchers found is that they found a positive and significant effect of um, institutions, property rights on GDP when they used this sort of mortality rate variable as an instrument. And that obviously contrasted with efforts to estimate this relationship via OLS because of the confounding effects of sort of the reverse causal effect and the fact that there are these omitted factors as well, which weren't being controlled for. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this sort of little bit of a sortie into a nice paper, I think, about the use of IV estimation. I really encourage you to go and read the paper. As I say, I've massively oversimplified what actually is going on in the paper. Uh, and I've actually included a link to the paper in the sort of notes below this video. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about the problems which are caused by actually using a poor instrumental variable. And what do we actually mean by a poor instrumental variable?